Hi, my name is Paul Mabry, and I'm the president of the Cross-Examination Debate Association. Yeah, yeah, yeah! She clack, clack! Or CETA. I speak to you today on behalf of the Cross-Examination Debate Association Executive Council. Recently, CETA celebrated the conclusion of the college policy debate season with the CETA National Debate Tournament hosted at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. I'll be having dreams of chocolate-covered watermelons fried with filled chicken likes pianos with little picking signs and data standard number in them with big sticks of aluminum foil. After four grueling days of competition, the team of Corey Johnson and Amina Ruffin from Towson University emerged victorious as the 2014 CETA National Champions. They say the niggas always already queer. That's exactly the point. It means that the impact is not, that the, that is an impact turn uh, to the uh, that. They defeated the team of Rashid Campbell and George Lee Jr. from the University of Oklahoma. Hands your mom and Uncle Ben are standing in the corners of the room with the rifles pointing the hands of the children. Don't shoot the children! I shot. Don't shoot the children! Instead of spending the month since the CETA National Debate Tournament celebrating their victory and reflecting on their historic moment, they have been on the defensive. Stories have emerged attacking the champions from Towson and finalists from Oklahoma for their argumentative choices and style. I say the black is the berry, the sweet is the juice, I say the dark is the flesh in the deep of the roots. These attacks on Towson, Oklahoma, and others in our debate community are motivated by racism and fear. These attacks are reprehensible, despicable, and must not be tolerated. CETA is unlike any other competitive forum. It uniquely enhances students' research. Yeah, I'll say by taking restrictions off of wind and solar, that will like uh, impact colonialism, or, or better yet, impact warming and climate change. Argumentation. And advocacy skills. I'm gonna paint a picture to show the deaf what it's like to listen. I'm gonna speak these words. I'm gonna tell the blind man what he missed. So my brothers doing time, man, up in prison and thought they had the results of crime. Fuck the system. My name is Paul Mabry, and I support the C to Four because they represent what is good about debate and the future of our society. Well, goddamn. How do you counter such a well-crafted argument? Mr. Mabry really threw the gauntlet down against all you, you bigoted, cishet, white, racist son of a bitches out there who would, who would say that these people are not the best of debate and the best of the future of society. I mean, how do you argue against that? I'm honestly asking you because he's turned off the ratings in the comments and I can't seem to get in touch with him, which is awkward considering he's the head of the largest debate association in the United States. That's right, CETA, the Cross-Examination Debate Association, has over 60 tournaments, a national championship that brings together, and this is quoting from Wikipedia, 175 teams. And this isn't something that just uh, got created yesterday. I mean, this has a, a long history. Back in 1971 is when it was founded. And we're talking about colleges from everywhere. Let me, let me list off a few, see if these sound familiar. The University of New Mexico, Florida State University, the University of California, Emporia State University, Fort Hayes State University, Dartmouth. Fucking Dartmouth. Really. Everybody. Everybody takes part in this stupid thing. I interspliced those clips. That wasn't me pulling shit out of my ass. Those were all clips from different CETA events. That was the 2014, the 2013, and even one from the 90s. That little Asian guy who looked like he was having a fucking panic attack at the podium. I'm not really sure what the hell he was arguing about other than his desperate need for oxygen because he was probably dead by the end of that. I don't think you can breathe like that as a normal human being and sustain your life. I think those two things contradict each other. Maybe they gave him his award, you know, at a memorial service. Like, good job, let's put it on top of the fucking tombstone. You really wild them out there. Now you might be asking, Jim, what amazing topic were the 2014 CETA championships about? I mean, quoting Tupac, it must have been something pretty extraordinary. Well, let me, let me give you the debate topic. This is verbatim. The United States federal government should substantially increase statutory and or judicial restrictions on the war power authority of the President of the United States in one or more of the following areas. Targeted killing, indefinite detention, offensive cyber operations, or introducing United States armed forces into hostilities. Well, clearly, clearly, the Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben shooting kids argument was pretty compelling. But the other girls who odd, ood, and <laughs> or whatever that argument was, really took it home. I don't think, 
I don't think Oklahoma could really outdo that. Now, they've, they've obviously lost to the better crafted argument. Now, I've mentioned many times uh, in previous videos saying that the source of what we see as social justice, of this special snowflake mentality that we see in society, is out there, and that I'm fairly certain where it comes from. Let me narrow that down a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm going to get that video done eventually, but it's academia. It's coming from academia. And here we see kind of an aspect of that. You have a debate format where people are supposed to put forward and argue for or against something. You've got two teams. They research, they craft arguments, they interact in you know, front of an audience. And it's whoever puts forth the best, most researched, most articulated argument is supposed to win. What the fuck is this then? That's not debate. Mabry talks in his video, and I'll have a link in the description if you want to go watch it. Uh, he talks in his video about how CETA prepares you for jobs in the real world, about activism and teaching and, you know, going out there and really, really providing a public service. What public service do you think these people are ever going to provide to anybody? What, what argument did they put forward? What research went into this? This is a joke. This isn't debate. What's really offensive about this is that it's at a college level. These fuckers in academia should know better. You cannot look at these debates. I'm not even going to call them debates. You cannot look at these fucking... I, I don't even know what to call them. I don't know what to call this. I'm at a loss for fucking words as to how you would describe this clusterfuck of people getting together and gasping at each other, throwing in a few raps, and saying nigger every other word. By the way, that's not an exaggeration. Go look at the CETA debates. I guarantee you that at least a tenth of the entire debates you will watch will be occupied by saying the word nigger. Accurately. It's nigger this, nigger that, nigger this, nigger that. They love that word. Nigger, 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 nigger. They love to say it. The niggas, the nigger, niggas, of the niggas, the niggas, authentic nigger, two niggas. War power should not be used against niggas. I mean, I sit here dumbfounded. Dumbfounded that the institutions which are supposed to provide higher learning which are supposed to prepare you for a future profession, that are supposed to give you the knowledge to look at our history and our economy and our society and, you know, to educate you and to make you better people and to more, you know, make you more well-rounded. Are pr These are the people promoting this. This is their grand thing. They're all really happy with themselves. They celebrate it. They're fucking proud of it. Mabry loves this shit. He thinks this is the way to the future. And when you look at some of the news coverage, I'm just going to show you a screen cap here from The Atlantic. Let me, let me give you the, the headline. See if you can figure out what the article's about. Hacking traditional college debates, white privilege problem. Minority participants aren't just debating resolutions. They're challenging the terms of the debate itself. Well, there's that word again. White privilege. Boy, that really gets around a lot in academia, doesn't it? They, they love that word. Social sciences, which don't even really have the right at this point to even have the word science in their title. Let's be honest here. Social science has as much to do with science as fucking Scientology does. Nothing. These people, they, they love it. This is the new thing. White privilege. If you saw on Progressives Today, the YouTube channel that put up the videos of the White Privilege Conference, which again, by the way, if you look at Tumblr, how long has that been around? Five, six, seven years? The White Privilege Conference has been going on 15 years. So it's not Tumblr putting this shit out and other people picking it up. It's academia putting it out and Tumblr picking it up from them. Oh, look, look at this clip. Let's, you know, they talked about teaching in their video. I mean, this will prepare you to be a teacher. Let me show you some of the teaching techniques about white privilege related to this. In this workshop, teachers Rosemary Colt and Diana Reeves demonstrate how they teach white privilege and social justice theory to eight-year-olds. Welcome to Examining White Privilege and Building Foundations for Social Justice in the Elementary Classroom. But what we are hoping to be able to convince you is possible is to take these <coughs> open sequences which you're directed to be using and to find within them opportunities to begin to insert social justice, anti-racist information for even little kids to understand. The social justice, anti-racism information these teachers are exposing the children to is reflected in these worksheets on display as part of the presentation. In one worksheet, the child comments that the Constitution doesn't work well for everyone because some people have different beliefs. One child writes that if you have privilege, that means you're white. White privilege is something that white people have 
meaning they have an advantage to a lot of things and they can get a jumble easily. Well, isn't that just lovely? Don't you just, doesn't it warm your heart? They're going to learn about social justice and about white privilege. Now, lest you think this is just the, you know, everyday teacher, you know, these are just a, a few sprinklings of lunatics getting together and discussing this, you need to understand that this is at the fundamental foundational level. The people writing the fucking criteria are the ones pushing this shit forward. Uh, case in point, Common Core. I'm going to show you a clip. I want you to listen to what David Pook has to say, and I'll talk about him in a second. Um, I'm not paid to be here either. Uh, and I'm just an uh, interested teacher who helped write the standards. And the reason why I helped write the standards and the reason why I am here today is that as a white male in society, I'm given a lot of privilege that I didn't earn. And as a result, I think it's really important. Ooh. Hey. Ooh. Now, he's the one who helped to write this. He helped the people who wrote this. Susan Pimento, or Pimentel, or however you say her name, and the other people that are, you know, designing Common Core. These are the people. This is from their own mouth, talking about this sort of thing. Now you might ask, how is that related? How is, how is white privilege and CETA related? It's related because academia, education, is corrupted and rotten to its core. There are issues that have faced us for decades. I'm not going to deny it, but you've got issues about funding and about curriculum. All right, and I know that one of the popular bitching fits over the last 10 to 15 years has been theists and atheists arguing about Darwinism and creationism being taught side by side. I get it, guys. I get it. It's a heated debate. You're both passionate about it. But let me tell you something to both of you. There is a much bigger fucking issue on the horizon. All right, the kids aren't even going to give a shit about creationism or uh, Darwinism. All right, they're not going to have time to. They're going to be too busy, you know, flagellating themselves because they're white or criticizing somebody else because they're white. The reason that you see CETA accepting this ridiculous form of nonsense shit is because they have convinced themselves that debate is a white thing and that if you don't adhere to the white thing, that's good because white people have privilege. So going in and attacking debate itself rather than tackling the subject you're talking about that's that's like meta. That's that to them is just genius. They love it. And the person that we saw at the beginning talking about, I'm the head of Seda, look at me. I'm going to turn off the comments because I can't take criticism. That asshole, he eats it up. And people like him eat it up. And so we continue our steady march forward, slowly trudging along towards that point of the lowest common denominator where we as a society have abandoned all standards, and we've given up on rigor and merit, and we've just prostrated ourselves on the altar of this fucking idiotic notion. We allow this farce to continue because we just don't care or we don't understand the scope of the problem and believe me it is a problem. You wait. You think millennials are bad? You wait one or two generations. You see what this produces. When you convince an entire segment of the population, every minority, that what? That debate and reason and discourse is a white thing? And that if they take part in that, that's white oppression, so they shouldn't be reasonable, they shouldn't use logic, they shouldn't take part in discourse? Are you insane? What do you think that, what do you think you're breeding? What do you think the future of that world's going to be like? You think it's going to be a pleasant place? This country cannot sustain itself on this fucking lunacy. Instead of focusing education on things like reason and logic and science, instead of teaching kids to look at the fucking world and explore it, we're poisoning them. We are poisoning them with this venomous ideology. You are making monsters. You are creating a generation of monsters, the likes of which this world has never seen before, who will be incapable of sustaining themselves and of solving problems on a basic level. When you throw away standards and allow lunacy like this, which is what CETA is, it is lunacy. When you throw away standards, and allow lunacy like this to take place. You dishonor everything education and debate and discourse is supposed to be about. I think Lewis put it best. Education without values, as useful as it is, seems rather to make a man a more clever devil. What are we breeding in this country? What has happened to America? Look at it. Take a look at the CETA debates and you tell me if that's debate. And then you go and look at the coverage about it and you listen to the educators, and you listen to the press, applaud it, they stand and they applaud it, mark my words, 
the next 20 and 30 years are not going to be pleasant ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah! So clack, clack!